repay ye is morphing into the save plan. The save plan is an option that is available for all of our student loans. No matter what your education experience was, it's going to be available for on any loan. Loans. Yes. So some of the big new developments, we can start with the new repayment plan that is out there. That's probably the biggest change to look at because it's going to have some trickle down effects into other options, other ideas here too. But uh, yeah, there is a brand new repayment plan that's been announced called the save plan or the saving on a valuable education plan. The save plan is an option that is available for all of our student loans. So the federal student loans anyway. No matter what your education experience was, it's going to be available for on any loan. loans. Yes. And it's actually a replacement, or you might even call it an improvement on the old revised pay as you were in plan or repay mm. or repay E. In effect, it's taking what revised pay as you were in had in, in place and changing some of the numbers that are in there to calculate payments in a way that really is beneficial in most cases. The key components there are that when we're talking about how the payment's calculated, the poverty level that's factored into it has been increased from 150 to 225%. What it effectively means is that payments are going to be lower on the save plan than they would have been on the equivalent revised pays you were in a repay plan. So overall, that's generally a good move or good uh, direction there for the save plan. Maybe to clarify, repay is not going away technically repay for existing borrowers. Repay is morphing into the save plan. So if you can I stay in repay if I want to stay stay in repay. No. So repay is just changing. Mm. And so ultimately if you're on repay, that's okay because this is better. Only improvement on there's no repay. downside to this versus repay. Right. So okay. the poverty level they take into effect is higher, which means payments are always lower. So payments are lower. The borrowers so this doesn't apply as much to the med school debt, but undergraduate debt, you'd pay 5% of income on and graduate debt is 10%. So if you were mm -hmm. doing mostly undergraduate, then the payment's lower as well. It used to be, it is just 10% of your income for current repay plans. And the downside there though is, though, is just like the current revised pays you were in plan, there's no limit to that income driven plan. So that 10% of income is 10%, whether you earn 50,000, 500,000, or $5 million a year. So those payments never hit a limit, which is also true on revised pays you earn. Still not a detriment to that plan, but something we'll want to keep in mind. Yeah. So repay will be gone and be turned into save. And there's only benefits relative to repay. Now, right. when we start to compare to like payee, there's some downsides that could be substantial because there's a cap on payee. Like, that cap for physicians, if you are on PSLF or even long-term forgiveness, payee has that cap based on your income. You can't go above a certain threshold, which if you have a really high income, that's huge. How does that work for someone on payee? So on payee, it would be that you would never have to pay more than what you would normally have to pay to pay that loan off in 10 years. So that's the upper limit of your payment on some of the other plans that are out there. But revised pays you earn in this new save plan doesn't have that limit. So if you could pay off your loans for $5,000 a month in 10 years, that would be the upper limit on pays you earn on income-based repayment, right? But on the save plan or revised pays you earn, that could go up to, there's no limit. So you could end up paying 10% on your income of a million dollars a year. And now that payment is significantly higher than 5,000 a month. But can I stay in pay if I want to? maintain that? For now, you can. And if you are on pay as you earn right now, which is the plan that allows you to cap that, you can stay on that plan. However, new enrollment in that plan is going to go away okay. less, less than a year from now. So in July of next year, there's no more new borrowers, no more switching into pay as you earn. If I'm like a super high income specialty and I'm in training, early in training, and I don't know if I'm going to be PSLF or not. I would really be thinking about maybe I should try to get into this payee deal before that window closes. Because it used to be that you always had that option, but you're mm -hmm. going to lose that forever. Because if you did end up in a PSLF type job in a high paying specialty, that payee becomes super valuable. So that's an important takeaway there. How does it work with all this interest that's built up 
in all these student loan accounts that's not yet accrued for all these changes. Normally when you change repayment plans, there's a capitalization event where all the interest gets added back to the principal and they start charging on how they're going to handle that with all these changes. Yeah. So in general, right now, what they're looking at is a change in payment plans or like an administrative forbearance is not going to capitalize interest. It may okay. not go away, but that is a small step in the right direction on those loans, not ballooning to be gigantic as you make changes all the time. Are there other big provisions or considerations with SAVE? A couple of other kind of interesting ones are that the old repay plan that it's built on did not allow you to split your income. So let's mm -hmm. say you couldn't file taxes separately. It always took everybody's income into account. And so that does present an opportunity now to file taxes separately and change how much income 